Hello everyone, this is Katie here. In this video, we are going to learn about the EVH chapter, Types of Birds. This is the second video of the chapter. The first video has already been given to you. Watch this video attentively and carefully. Happy watching. In this video, we are going to learn about different types of beaks found in birds, different types of claws found in birds, and nesting of birds. Now I am going to explain about beaks, about beaks of birds. So listen attentively and pay attention. Different birds have different types of beaks. But what exactly is a beak? In biological terms, it is a type of mouth in which the jaws are covered by a horny layer of keratin that is like the nails or horn of a rhinoceros and have no teeth at all. It is characteristic of birds, however other animals also have beaks. For example, platypus and echidnas, monotro mammals, turtles and some chapalopods such as squid. Now I am going to explain what are the different types of beaks. Generally, bird beaks are categorized according to their shape and functions. There are two types of birds, generalists who use different techniques to obtain food, whose beaks do not have specific shapes, and specialists whose beaks are adopted for a single function. This could be for obtaining food in a certain way, for mating or for building nests. Here are the main groups or specialized beaks. First of all, carnivorous birds. Birds that feed on vertebrates have strong hooked beaks with the upper part protruding over the lower part. They are securely attached to the skull. They use it to tear and pull the flesh of their prey. Birds of prey such as eagles and falcons and scavengers such as vultures are a clear example of this. In fact, according to one study, these birds are the only ones whose beaks do not depend on adaptations to feeding habits, but on their size. The shape of the beaks is not very varied among the different species within this group. Now granivorous birds. This group of birds feed mainly on seeds. In many cases, they have a short, robust beak that ends in a conical shape, allowing them to break seeds. Goldfinches, sparrows, and canaries are all good examples of granivorous birds, I mean the birds which eat seeds. Now frugivorous birds. Frugivorous birds, although they feed on fruit, they Meaty or dried, these birds can also feed on seeds. Their beaks are specialized at dealing with fruit, which they open to obtain the pulp or seeds. They usually have a short curved beaks with a specialized tip for extracting the edible parts of the seeds. The lower part of this kind of beak is flat and sharp, ideal for splitting the hard fruits. In addition, they are the only birds capable of moving the upper part of the beak independently. This allows them to exert more force either to break seeds and fruit or to hold on to branches. Parrots, parakeets, cockatoos and macaws are all in this group. Now insectivorous birds. There are several ways of hunting insects. In the case of birds, that hunt insects in the air, they do so with their mouth open. Therefore, the beak is usually short, wide and flat, 
Examples of this include the swallows and the swift. Other birds prefer to catch insects when they are still. These have short, straight, thin beaks such as the bee eater or robin. Those that feed on insects and invertebrates in the ground such as hoopoes have thin, elongated beaks. Finally, those that pierce the bark of the tree to remove larvae such as have kingfisher have straight and very strong beaks that allows them to penetrate the bark. Now wading birds. These are waterfall that have long beaks with different shapes adapted to searching for in the invertebrates at the bottom of the ponds and masses while keeping their heads out of the water. The stalk or spoon bill would be example of this type of bird. Now piscivorous birds. Piscivorous birds are birds which catch fish. These birds feed on fish that they catch by diving into the water. In most cases, they have large, strong beaks with a curved tip or serrated ridges to prevent their prey from escaping. This group includes birds like seagulls and albatross. In other cases such as pelicans, they may have a flexible pouch beneath the beak where they can store fish once they have been caught. Filter feeding birds. These birds have wide flat beaks. In some cases such as flamingos, they are very specialized in obtaining food from the pond and river beds. These beaks have a filtering system whereby the bird removes the water and separates out the organism on which these birds feed. Swans and ducks are also in this group. They tend to have thin long beaks although the shape can vary depending on the kind of flowers they feed on. These are some species of hummingbirds that can feed on flowers inaccessible to most animals making them the main pollinators. They depend on each other in perfect symbiosis. So these I have explained the different types of beaks found in birds. Now I am going to explain feet and claws of birds. Birds use their feet and claws in walking, climbing, holding foods, swimming and perching. Birds use their claws for self-defense also. The shape of their feet and claws depend on their food habit. Claws have long curved nails. According to shape and size, feet and claws are of different types. Now first of all birds of prey. Birds of prey are also known as raptors. Birds of prey are feed on flesh of other animals. And hence their feet and claws are adapted or modified according to their food habits. Preying birds have strong and sharp claws to catch and hold the prey firmly and carry them away. Vulture Climbing birds Woodpeckers and parrot are climbing birds. They have two toes pointing forward and two backwards. These type of claws help birds to climb on trees to catch the insects. Now swimming birds <coughs> Ducks and penguins are the example of swimming birds. They have wet feet. In these feet, fingers are joined with thin membrane which helps to push water during swimming. Ducks are good swimmers but they walk slowly. Wading birds. Wading birds have long legs and wide spread toes which help to walk in shallow water and mud. Crane and jacana are wading birds. So these were these are the different types of claws that are found in birds. A talon is the claw of a bird of prey. Its primary hunting tool. The talons are very important. Without them, most birds of prey would not be able to catch their food. Some birds also use claws for defensive purpose. Cassowaries use claws on their inner toe 
digit for defense and have been known to December Powell people. All birds, however, have claws, which are used as general hold fast and protections for the tip of the digit. The Hodgin and Tureko are unique among extant birds in having functional claws on the thumb and index finger on the four limbs at chicks, allowing them to climb trees until the adult plumage with flight feathers develop. However, several birds have a claw or nail-like structure hidden under the feathers at the end of their hang digits, notably ostriches, emus, ducks, geese and kiwis have these. So we can see here that birds have different kinds of claws for different needs. For example, claws in ducks, goose and swan are used to swim in water, whereas claws in pigeon and sparrow are to hold the tree branches to perch, whereas woodpecker and parrots have claws to climb the tree. So we have seen here that birds feet come in different sizes and shapes. A bird's foot is designed to help it navigate its environment and find the food it needs. So I have explained you the different types of feet and claws found in birds and how they use them to have food. to climb, to perch, and also for defensive purpose. These were the uses and types of claws found in birds. Now I am going to explain about the nest, different types of nest and nestling of birds. Birds as small as hummingbirds and as large as herons nest on tree branches. So do hawks, owls and crows. The nest may be found at every level of the tree, from the crown to the understory. They may be near the crotch between branch and trunk or out toward the end of a branch. Birds may use maples, pines, junipers, oaks, sycamore and palm trees for nesting. Some birds such as certain sparrows species use grasslands and brushy areas making the nest on the ground. Species such as wrens, juncos and finches may build their nest in bushes and shrubs with dense compact foliage or on the ground below them. Some swallows and fly catchers build mud nests attached to the sides of building under culverts and the eaves of houses. Woodpeckers, wrens, some species of owls, sap suckers and swallows use cavities that they either excavate themselves or use after another has abandoned it. They will use holes found in live and dead trees, stumps, cacti and sides of old buildings. The types of nests that birds construct are as varied as the birds themselves. A few of the major examples I am going to explain now. A scrap nest. Scrap nests are simple depressions in the ground, sometimes with a few stones or leaves added, or in the leaf litter. Such nests are used by shorebirds, gulls, terns, and nightwalks, vultures, and other species. Now next type of is nest is burrow nest. Burrow nests are very effective at protecting eggs and young from predators and maintaining an appropriate 
microclimate for eggs and young. Some birds like bank swallows and belted kingfishers usually construct their own burrows while others such as burrowing owls may use the burrows constructed by other species. Cavity nest. Cavity nests are used by numerous passerines, woodpeckers, owls, parrots, and some waterfall. Woodpeckers construct their own cavity nest and are referred to as primary activity. Primary cavity nesters. Species that use natural cavities or cavities constructed by Primary cavity nesters are called secondary cavity nesters. Platform nest. Platform nest are relatively flat nest that may be located on the ground in a tree or on the tops of rooted vegetation or debris in shallow water. Cup nest. Cup nests are of course cup shaped. Such nests may be constructed of various material and in a varied and a variety of locations. Noted ornithologists all in several particular subcategorized cup nests as follows. Supported cup nests are those located in the crotches and branches of trees and shrubs, supported mainly from below. Many passerines and hummingbirds build such nests. Suspended cup nest. Suspended cup nests are not supported from below, but from the rim sides of both. Pensile. Pensile nests are suspended from the rims and sides, rather stiff. Example, those of kinglets and vireos. Adherent nest. Adherent nest, cup nest, whose sides are attached by an adhesive substance, example mud or saliva, to a vertical surface like those of swifts and some swallows. Now come to ground nest. Ground nest include cup nest on the ground. Slides are sometimes extended upward and arc over the top making dome structure. Several passerines, particularly those that occupy open habits like grasslands, build ground nests. A local example is the white crowned sparrows. So these I have explained about different types of nests are built and used by birds. So I hope in my first video, I have explained the different types of birds found in India. And in my second video, that's been in this video, which you are watching now, I have explained about the beaks, claws, and nest of different types of birds. I have explained the different types of claws found in birds and their uses, how they use it. And I have also explained the different types of beaks found in birds and how they use it. And I have also explained different types of nests used by birds for what purpose and what are the different types of nest and how nestling is important for birds. So I hope all of you have understood the chapter birds properly and nicely and have understood the chapter explained by me in a proper manner. Still if you have any doubts, you can see the video again and again. You will surely, you will surely understand the video well and ex understand the chapter well. Okay, I hope you have all, all of you have understood the video and the chapter about birds. Good luck. Thank you.